Hello folks, this is Sula once again. You're listening to another video for League of Legends, and this one's going to be featuring a Jungle Ramus. This is taken from one of our Tuesday YouTube Night Custom Games. In this game, I'm going to be jungling as Ramus. Alongside me is Myth, who's going to be playing as Vayne. Electric, who's going to be playing as Riven. XPL, who's going to be playing as Aurelian Soul. And Black, I don't know how to pronounce this, I'm just going to call, just going to call our Soraka player Black. OXC. We'll probably just call him Black for simplicity's sake. So that's what we have on blue side. Uh, let me get the minimap up. There we go. Alright, on the other team, on red side, again, also people who are followers of the YouTube channel or just came out to join us today, we have Fafleck, who's going to be playing as Ari, Landon Peanut, who's going to be playing as Jinx, Snow in September, who's going to be playing as Garen, Wall and Brian, who's going to be jungling as Warwick, and then CC Skyfish is going to be supporting as uh, Zyra. So those are the two sides. This was our last game of the day, and it turned into a really good game. It actually turns into a rather long match, so this one will uh, take a while to play all the way through, but uh, it was very rewarding, and we had a really good time in this game. I think everybody in this game enjoyed how this one turned out because it got very competitive. I'm going to be focusing more on my perspective in this game, in part because I can talk better about my perspective since I was the one playing Ramus, and also because, well, Ramus, fairly popular jungler right now, not really in the competitive scene, but you see him a lot in solo queue. He really has not changed from the way that he was years ago. His kit is really well designed, it's simple, easy to understand. Ramus's kit is based around stacking armor and powerballing into the enemy team and then focusing on one priority target. Ramus doesn't clear the jungle super fast, but he's reasonably good at that. He can be a, de a deceptively strong duelist if he's up against someone who is stacking AD. So that's always kind of the thing with Ramus. He is much better against champs that are physical damage based, as, and particularly champs that are physical damage based and are auto attackers, as opposed to champions who are magic damage based or might deal their damage through their skills. And we'll go through why that is in a minute. First though, let's just look at the lanes. Again, we have Electric is driven against Snow is September playing as Garen, and a really early roam from XPL on Aurelian Soul coming up here to top lane. I don't think this is going to be effective. Uh, like he, he met, I'm sure that this was a surprise to Snow in September, but not sure it was worth it because XPL is losing out a lot of farm. Anyway, so XPL and Aurelian Soul against Fatlick as Ari in mid. Bot lane, we have Myth and Black up against Landon and Skyfish. It's a uh, Vayne Soraka against a Jinx Zyra lane. So good late game scaling on both sides. And as I mentioned, Jungle Warwick played by Ball and Brian, and then me being played on Jungle Ramus. Quick note on the, the route. This is a very standard route. I start red, get some help from my teammates. Then I go into double golems, or I, I guess they're called the Krugs now, but they used to be doubled golems, and then go to rates and then that gets me to level 3. Now, normally I would continue farming, but I was like, hey, I think I can actually get a gank off on Fat. Like, I actually do not have taunts up right now on Ramus, but it turns out that with the Ignite and some nice auto attacks from XPL, that is enough to get a kill there. And earlier there was a first blood in top lane as Snow in September. With his stacking Reju beads build, I actually managed to get first blood in top lane against Electric Driven. All right, so that early action out of the way, let's now turn and look at Ramus as a champion what makes him a good jungler, how you build this guy, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to start with his passive, Spike Shell. Ramus' basic attacks deal bonus magic damage, scaling with his armor. So again, as I mentioned, Ramus' thing is he kind of stacks lots of armor. One of the reasons why you do this is it goes along with his passive. It used to be a long time ago, back when I was playing League of Legends in the earlier days, it used to be the way his passive worked was you would just get flat AD based on how much armor he had. So this is the same general idea, but instead of getting AD, he gets bonus magic damage. So not quite as good as what he did back in the day. So no uh, no Infinity Edge Ramus in late game. Uh, nothing like that, but you can you do get more magic damage based on how much armor you stack. So there is an incentive to get lots and lots and lots of armor on Ramus. It was actually a kill down there in the bottom lane as Landon and CC Skyfish pick up a kill on Myth in the bottom lane. Okay, so in terms of Ramus' skills, I'm going to mention his W skill first because when you jungle Ramus, you put a point in W at level 1 and then you leave it there. You don't skill that you... Um, you actually give this the last skilling priority, but you do put a point in it first because you need one point in the skill to jungle. This is his defensive ball curl. Ramus enters a defensive formation for up to six seconds. Increases armor. I wish it would stop going away here. Okay, well, now I'm using this skill, so I can't pull the text. It'll be back in a second. Um, uh, 
Let's keep this set. Okay. Increases armor. Wow, why does it keep going away? Increases armor by 30. Increases magic resist. Well, you can basically get more armor and magic resist. The game won't let me apparently pull the uh, the actual text up here. But you get more armor and more magic resistance, and it scales off of how much armor and MR you have. There we go. Uh, a flat 30 armor, a flat 10 MR, and then 60% of your armor and 30% of your magic resist. But the trade-off is you are slowed by 30%. However, during the time Spike Shield deals 150% damage, deals its damage to enemies that basic attack Rammus. So now this is what really sets up Rammus as a champion. When you put defensive ball curl on, you are slowed. It's much harder for you to walk around the map. However, any enemy that you get like ridiculous amounts of armor and magic resistance, particularly as the game goes on, uh, more armor than magic resistance, but um, you get a lot of both, and any enemy who attacks you will suffer damage in return, because hey, it's a spiked shell. Now watch how effective this is going to be against the raptor camp, so I'm going to put on the spiked shell, that's the little graphic around Rambus, and note that all the raptors just like kill themselves instantly against the defensive ball curl. That's what happens to enemy champions too, if you get, uh, once you um, get enough armor. In fact, AD champions, uh, in particular AD carries, ranged ADs in bot lane, are really good at killing themselves on Rambus's spike shell. Unfortunately there, it's going to be, a, for my team, it's going to be a double kill for Landon and CC Skyfish as they're able to set up that kill. And then this is going to turn into an early dragon for their team. Nothing we can do about this on my side. Uh, with that double kill on bot, there's no way for me to get in there. And instead, I'm going to look to try to make a play top. So watch this. This is actually going to be really sad. So here I am. I'm going to come in. I'm going to powerball on Snow in September. I'm going to flash on him. And oh, that was a whiff. <laughs> I tried to powerball in. I was trying to flash onto him so I could get the powerball knockup. But nope, missed it. And then I was out of range to get the taunt because Snow in September just stepped away. So that is a very bad gank and a very bad sequence of plays for us. I'm actually going to turn off the chat just because it gets really annoying here if you keep it on during the game. So, let, with that in mind, let's look at Ramus's Q skill, his power ball here. Ramus accelerates in a ball. Game, I'm lock the camera on Ramus. Ramus accelerates in a ball, gains up to blah 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 movement speed. You get more movement speed as you put more points in the skill. On enemy collision, he deals magic damage, knocking them back and slowing them for up to one second. You can end this, you can end it early if you want. Well, there's actually a pretty big fight in the bottom lane, so we should probably watch this. Unfortunately, Landon gets, what, another kill, two more kills, and now Faflix come down, charges X, charms XPL, and so their team went three for zero, and this bot lane, not off to a good start for my team. Landon has snowballed pretty far ahead. I'd like to hold this tower. It's gonna be pretty tricky to do. At best, I can just try to scare them away. Now, they have used their skill, so like, I don't really want to go in here. I'm just trying to spook them away. And we are able to stop them after they take one plate. But damage is done. If you look at the bottom lane, Landon is 1,500 gold ahead of Myth right now. And on a Jinx that is really good late game scaling, that's not a good sign. And unfortunately, we appear to be losing top lane as well, where Snow is 2-0 and and Electric is 0-2. And, and he's ahead by about 700 gold, although it's going to be more than that because he's taking tower plates. So again, this is not really the start that we want with our team losing in bot and losing in top lane. We are winning in mid, but uh, and I'm also behind in the jungle, if not by a lot. Biggest difference is that Ball and Brian was able to get that first dragon. So back to Powerball, you, as far as the, uh, Jungle Ramos goes, you put a point in his W first at level 1, then you don't put any more points in W, it is your one point skill, up until very late in the game. You then max Powerball with your first priority. And the rationale for this is you get more movement speed, you also get more damage, uh, it allows Ramos to move around the map more quickly, so like watch right here, I'm going to Powerball into them, then put on Defensive Ball Curl, helps us clear, and it just makes your gank so much more powerful. I am not sure if more points in the skill lowers the cooldown. I will have to check that. I should have checked that before doing the video. But this is, again, really integral to Ramus's gameplay. Powerball in, then use your defensive ball curl. That's kind of the basics. So, like, powerball in, get the damage, get the little knockup effect, then put on defensive ball curl. Very basic, very easy to understand, but pretty fundamental to how you play Ramus. It also then synergizes really well with Ramus' third skill. Up, oh, and we've got another fight going on here. Let's see, can Myth get out of this one? Nope, gonna have to flash out of the Zyra. Uh, ultimate and there was a fight in top lane as well, but electric was able to get out of that one I think we have XPL coming down the river. Let's see if this is gonna turn into a fight, but nope, not so much um, Yeah, not really in a position to fight there So here you're gonna see me try to powerball in I'm looking to try to catch them, but nope jinx traps Zyra plants means can't really go in on that 
All right, so let's talk about Rammus' third skill, his E. This is his taunt. It's one of the on the short list of some of the best skills in the game. Taunt an enemy champion or monster for 1.25 seconds, gain 20% attack speed. While any of Rammus' other spells are active, Frenzy's taunt attack speed bonus is refreshed. So uh, this is what Rammus has in terms of crowd control. He can make one person on the enemy team attack him. Um, it starts at 1.25 seconds. It does go up as you put more points in the skill. So this is what you will skill second on a jungle Rammus. Unlike classic Rammus back in the day, you also gain attack speed. So it is worthwhile sometimes to taunt jungle camps just because you get bonus attack speed. Particularly if you have the blue buff. Now, I'm not going to have the blue buff because Ball and Brian, after helping to push over top lane tower, has gone and stolen the blue. So I'm about to get up there and I was like, oh, yeah, I don't have blue buff. That's sad. So, nice job by Ball and Brian. He's doing a great job of controlling this game so far. You can see he's ahead in the jungle matchup. Well, not by a lot, but he is, you know, 400 gold ahead. That's that's significant. And their team is ahead 9 to 2 in kills. They're about 5,000 gold ahead. And they also took the first dragon. And unfortunately, it's another Infernal Drake spawning. So, it's going to be difficult for us to try to uh, contest for this one as well because we don't really have a lot of strength in bottom lane. Where their bottom lane is 6 kills and our bottom lane has, bottom lane has 1. So over here, I'm just hanging around, trying to see what I can do next. So Rammus, jungle, jungle Rammus gameplay, pretty basic, power ball in, defensive ball curl to make you tanky, taunt them, and then force them to attack you, at which point in time they will kill themselves on your defensive ball curl. As I've said, uh, can be deceptively good as a duelist against auto attackers. Like, for example, in this game we have Landon, who's playing as Jinx. He's already got the Infinity Edge. Well, because he has Infinity Edge, if he attacks me when I have my defensive ball curl on, he's just going to end up doing lots and lots of damage to himself. This further synergizes with Thornmail, which is kind of the key Rammus item. You pretty much always want to build a Thornmail on Rammus because it synergizes so well with the defensive ball curl. And again, reflects the point that you want to make the enemy team attack you and then kill themselves while attacking you. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe I can go in and get Jinx, but nope, gonna get rooted by Zyra, knocked up by Zyra, and I was like, oh, wow, that Jinx, that Jinx is really strong in this game. And now Landon's continuing to try to chase down Black. Soraka, unfortunately, does not have any defensive skills, and that uh, plant root by, um, by Zyra is gonna force him to walk even further to the right, which is not where he wants to go. So two more kills picked up on Landon. He is now 801, 1,000 gold bounty. He's legendary on the game. And this is pretty much hand delivers another dragon over to their team. So we can't contest this. They're going to have double infernal. They're 5,000 gold ahead. And we are in deep, deep trouble. So knowing that I can't do anything there at dragon, I'm going to look to try to make a play here in top lane. Where Snow in September is way ahead and he's pushing. So I'm going to look to powerball in. There it is, powerball in. And there's going to be the taunt. So it forces him to attack me. And then I'm able to get the shutdown. Electric actually did more of the damage there. But um, with my ult running... It turns out I pick up the kill, I get the shutdown bonus, and eh, we'd probably rather have it on Rammus, or excuse me, probably rather have it on Riven, but it's not awful on Rammus. So with that said, let's look at Rammus' ultimate real quick, because I haven't mentioned it. Rammus' ultimate tremors, shake the earth for 7 seconds, deals magic damage to nearby enemies, slows them, and it does stack up to 8 times. Also deals damage to turrets, one of the very, very few skills in the game that deals damage to turrets. There aren't a lot of skills that do this. So the big thing is uh, you don't aim it, it's not a skill shot, you just turn it on, usually when you power ball in, power ball in, defensive ball curl, taunt, and just throw on your tremors. It is on a short cooldown. The big thing is that it will slow, uh, excuse me, here it is, it will slow en nearby enemies and it does stack up to eight times. So if they stand near your tremors, they will get slowed further and further and further. Here, Myth is going to get uh, jumped on by Ball and Brian's Warwick. He is able to escape, but that's another turret down. And look at this gold lead. It is 6,000 gold. And uh, they got all of the tower plates in both bot and top lane. And that's a lot of gold in those tower plates. So we're also now losing control of our jungle down here. And we are just in all kinds of trouble in this game. Down, what, 6,000 gold? Down double infernals? Down two towers? We are not in great shape. I did notice one thing though, I noticed that Snow's Garen was pushing forward and I was like, alright, well, we just ganked him, why don't I try ganking him again? Um, so Electric's going to initiate, he's going to go in first, now I'm going to look to Powerball in, going to Powerball around, and now I'm going to go ahead and there is the taunt right there, forces Garen to attack me. Electric's going to get the Riven stun, Snow's going to flash the wall, Electric goes right after him, and now I'm like, oh, I have Powerball off of cooldown again, I'm just going to keep going, 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 boom, and down he goes. So we can't contest that Infernal. They do end up getting the double Infernal, but we are able to pick up a kill, another kill in top lane. And that ends up helping Electric quite a bit because it relieves a lot of pressure, gets him to continue farming. 
and just generally puts us in better shape there. Now, unfortunately, then we lose yet another kill to... Um, actually, I think that was a... Hold on. I think that was a Jinx rocket. Let me go back here. So, all right. So, yeah. XPL is recalling in mid. Here comes the Jinx rocket, and... Oh, I didn't even see that when this game was going on. Wow. Nicely played, Landon. That was worth rewinding just to see that one. Even if I now have to go back and update the, uh, the uh, scoreboard again, because it resets every time I, I back up. Very nicely done there. All right, there we go. Not too bad. So we kind of need the other team to make a mistake. I'm trying to clear the red. I know Warwick's in the area. Unfortunately, I do not have smite up. It's like two seconds from coming off cooldown, but Brian does have smite up. And so I'm going to get rooted here. I'm going to have to flash out of that. And yeah, so they took red. They get another turret mid, and they were able to pop my flash and in exchange for basically nothing. So again, not looking too good here, guys. Not for the blue team. It ends up with their head 7,000 gold, and now Landon's going to flash to get that kill. And he does pick up the kill on black, our Soraka player, but was it worth it to flash for that? I'm not sure it was to flash to get a kill on an 05 Soraka, who's now 06. Arguably not worth it, because remember, Jinx does not have any escape skills. And in fact, with Landon being so strong in this game, much of the gameplay was going to end up turning, uh, was going to end up focusing around whether or not my team could manage to get on top of Jinx. Uh, so arguably not worth it, but it is another kill. I'm looking to try to get in here. So Electric is now nope, he's going to go in. He's going to get that stun. Now I'm going to powerball in, get the taunt, and it's like, hmm, you know, it might have been better to have flash up there to get out of that. But Electric goes in, gets the initial engage. I'm able to follow that up with a taunt, and this would end up being a pattern in this game. Whether we could manage, like I said, whether we could manage to use crowd control on Landon. We did get the thousand gold shutdown there, which again went to me as Ram, as we probably would have preferred to get that on someone else. But thousand gold shutdown is big. In fact, Landon has so much money that he actually still has a 750 gold shutdown, even after that initial thousand gold shutdown. And we just were able to, uh, Electric was able to get the initiation that time. And then we we're able to follow that up, and yeah, Jinx. If you can, if we could get past the rest of the enemy team, could get past like the Zyra Root and the Zyra uh, Ultimate. What's the what's the name of Zyra's Ultimate again? Stranglethorns. If we could get past that, and uh, then we, you know, we we actually had a decent chance to win these fights because so much of their gold lead was on the Jinx. Like if you look, um, four thousand of their gold. What are they? They're like uh, six thousand gold ahead. Well, four thousand of that lead is just in the AD matchup. So if we can somehow manage to take out Jinx in a fight, we're actually not as far behind as it seems. And we do have a decent comp for dealing with the Jinx because we have Ramus, And we also have Electric's ability to flash in and get a stun on um, get a stun on Jinx with Riven's... Uh, what is it? Which, which one is it? With her... Um, which one is it? Her Key Burst. Her, her W is the one that uh, stuns. So not a long stun. Only... 0.75 seconds, but it is a stun. So anyway, a dragon is respawned. We would love to fight for this, but we're not really in great position. And in fact, Baflik takes a really nice spot lurking in the brush. Is going to assassinate Black as he goes in. And this is one where, as much as we'd like to fight for it, there's just not much we can do. Their team is too far ahead. They have position. Baflik picks a nice spot and claims a kill on our Soraka player. And so they're going to be able to claim that, and so now they have double Infernal and a Mountain, so they're going to have ridiculous Baron pressure. It's going to be really hard for us to try and contest that. Well, I've got a second here. We'll peek in on me. As I mentioned, one point in W first on Ramus because you need one point in W to jungle. And then after that, yeah, this looks like a fight, but it's, I believe this is not going to turn into a bigger one. One point on W first, you need it to jungle, then put points in your Q, give Powerball first skilling priority. You put your first point in Taunt at level 4, and then you look to max your Taunt second, because you do want more points in the skill. Now, we're looking to Powerball in here, and we are going to get the Scuttle Crab, which helps. That's going to make it harder for them to try and sneak a Baron. But again, ultimately, we are just a lot weaker than the enemy team right now. We have to be very careful about how we pick our engages because, you know, just a straight up 5v5, it's going to be really hard for us to win. And in fact, we have Myth Farming Bot, which he needs to do. He needs to get stronger. So this is not really a fight we're looking to pick. Uh, Electric's going to go in. He gets rooted by the Jinx Chompers. And again, we don't have Vayne. Not really a fight we're looking to pick. And unfortunately now, Soraka, oh, Soraka does not have a lot of escapes, but Black is able to get out at the cost of his flash right there. So again, looking to just fight another day, and fight in a situation that's more advantageous to us. So at this point, we're like, oh my god, they're going to do Baron. We're in so much trouble. we got to go up there to contest it. And then we're like, wait a minute. It's actually the Rift Herald. It's not Baron. It's early enough in the game that it's just the Rift Herald. And we were actually caught off with that. We're like, oh, it's the Rift Herald. So now we're just like, all right, let's just run away. <laughs> 
But yeah, only 19 minutes, Baron has not spawned yet, and frankly, it's really good for us that Baron has not spawned yet, because they could have done that pretty easily if they'd wanted that. And so now we're pretty low, their team is in a great position to push, they probably should just summon the Rift Herald here right now to help them push. Let's see if they try to do that or not. Uh, Snow in September is the one who's picked it up, as opposed to the jungler who normally gets it. So yeah, they probably should just summon it right here and help them push because we are not in any kind of position. We're actually looking to back to try to heal, but then Landon's going to interrupt my blue pill, so we are not really in great position to fight this, and their team's feeling really good. All right, they're, now they're going to summon the Rift Yard, but their team is looking to pick a fight here, and it turns out that they're going to get a little aggressive, so I'm going to slow it down to half speed. Snow in September goes in, but he goes in a little too deep, and we're able to blow him up pretty quickly. I actually get the kill. The Strangle Thorns is not quite what they want, and look, they're actually engaging on Soraka, which is not really the right target. Meanwhile, Myth is totally safe back here in the back. Going to claim one kill there. They're wasting a lot of their damage on me, Ramus. So even though I am going to get killed, and we are going to lose Black as well, the rest of the team just totally cleans up. We end up going 5 for 0 and get an ace in that fight. So we actually lost the two least important members of the team. We lost the Jungle Ramus, we lost the Soraka, and I think that was them just forcing the fight a little too much. They could have waited until Rift Herald charged in to engage, but instead Snow flashed in and tried to engage on us, and it wasn't really, uh, it, was, it was just a little bit too much of a forced engage. They didn't get to the priority targets on our team, which would be Myth and XPL and Electric. All of them were mostly untouched in that fight. Instead, most of the damage was going on to Soraka and Ramus. In particular, Ramus is someone you don't really want to focus in, the, in a team fight because Ramus doesn't really do much damage, and Ramus is someone who is always going to be really tanky just due to the way his skills work. So that was hugely significant for us, and it puts our team not in, obviously it doesn't equal the game or anything like that, but it puts us at least back in the conversation. We are back to being about 4,000 gold behind, which is still a lot. Don't get me wrong but a much, much better position to be in than we were before. And so we're going to look to go back, spend this gold, and be in a better position to fight. As it turns out that there's actually going to be another fight pretty quickly here. So keep an eye on how we're going to try to pick this engage. This is really the key to this entire game, is how we end up picking fights for both teams, really, how fights get started. Always really important, but in this game, due to the way, the fact that both of our comps ended up being really focused around our ADs, uh, around Vayne on one side and around the Jinx on the other side, how we pick the start to these fights ended up being really important. All right, so right now, just a little skirmishing over wards. We see that Warwick is down here in back bottom lane, so we're like, oh, this might be a good time to pick a fight if we can manage to get a good engage. So I am going to start powerballing here. I'm going to slow it down to half speed again, so watch this. Fatflick's going to miss the charm, and then I am going to flash on top of Landon and taunt him. And even though I'm now going to be focused by the enemy team, that's what we want. But we've gotten the taunt on Landon, and as soon as they lose Landon, their team can't really win this fight because they're missing all their damage. Electric's going to flash in and get the stun on Fatflick, so that's the second kill. We've taken out the two biggest priority targets. Now Snow in September is going to fall, and Warwick is getting here a little bit late. Juan Brian's going to jump in, but he doesn't quite hit anyone. And now he's just going to try to escape, but watch this. I'm Ramus. My powerball is off cooldown. I'm going to roll after him, boom, and then we're going to go in and taunt him, and the rest of the team follows up with damage, and we're like, oh my god, we just went 5 for 0, or no, 4 for 0, Skyfish was able to get out of that, we just went 4 for 0 and aced them, and Baron is sitting right there, so hello our ticket back into this game, we're going to look to take this Baron, there's really nothing the enemy team can do, everybody is dead, a support Syrah can't really do anything to try to take this, and just like that, we've managed to flip this whole game around on its head with two really good fights. Both, in the first fight, it was more the enemy team over diving, and uh, Electric actually got off a really nice stun in that first fight. This time, it was all about Ramus getting off a great engage. So not, not trying to pat myself on the back too much, but did get a really good engage, was able to flash on top of Landon and taunt him, and once we finished him off, there really wasn't a lot the enemy team could do. Now, here's the bad news on this. There's a third Inferno that just spawned, and we were trying to get there to fight for it because we had Baron, and we'd mostly closed the gold gap, but we can't get there fast enough, so their team's going to have triple Inferno, and that's going to be on their team for the entire rest of the game. So we're like, oh, that's not good. Triple Inferno, ugh. So they're going to have the plus 24% attack damage and ability power for the entirety of the rest of the game. If we had just managed to take one Infernal Drake, we could have had, uh, we would have gotten 10% and they would be at 17%, so the relative difference would only have been 7%, which isn't really that much, but with them having 24% bonus and us having 0% bonus, like, look, Landon's at 273 damage, and he only has three items plus boots. He still has two full items that he can stack up, so he's going to be at some totally insane total later in the game. 
Um, in terms of AD, he can probably get up to like almost 500 AD, depending on what items he builds later on. So anyway, again, we're still looking to we're still looking to try to get a fight now. Granted, uh, Electric is in top. He's going to try to get this top tower, so we can't really fight. And unfortunately, we've kind of been outmaneuvered here, which shouldn't happen because we have the Baron. But they're just going to shove it down mid where there is an open inhibitor, and we're like, oh shoot, we uh, we probably shouldn't have given them that opportunity. Skyfish doing a nice job of warding us off. So we're going to look to do this. But Electric is still on top, so we, we really can't fight because we don't have Riven. And Myth has also gotten chunked here. Fortunately, we do have a Soraka to help us out. But, I mean, again, it's a, it's a 5v4. And now we're, Skyfish is going to go ahead and get the knockup on me. And I am tanky, but I'm not that tanky. And I'm going to get blown up by the enemy team. So we're going to lose me, and we're then going to lose Black Soraka. And Myth, can you get out of here? Oh, nope, not going to be able to get out. So this, this uh, initial Baron take has gone horribly wrong for us. And Myth is going to get the 1v1 kill onto Snow's uh, Garen. But then Ball and Brian is there to clean up on the back end of that. So they end up going 3 for 1. And it's not a good fight for us at all. So unfortunately, this is going to waste much of the Baron that we just ended up taking. And uh, a lot of it was just due to us maneuvering poorly around the map. Now, we are getting stuff for this. Electric got one tower top. He's going to get a second tower top. But still, kind of a waste of a Baron. Not, much, not what we wanted. Enhanced Recall is going to get him out quickly. So they were able to get the Inhib. They get a good fight. They go three for one. And we end up, like I said, wasting a lot of that Baron. So, eh, not the best. Definitely could have played that better. We really should not have allowed them to outmaneuver us as they just went straight down mid. Because now we're going to have to deal with Super Minions in the mid lane once again. In terms of Ramus, I mentioned the skill order. You can see him continuing that. Let's talk briefly about the items. So the first thing I did was I did finish his jungle item. I've gone for the pretty standard tanky build. You you get the uh, the Cinder Hulk. In particular, it's good to get the um, the what's the the component that deals magic damage over time. I think it's Bami's Cinder. Not 100% sure, but this is generally the way you want to go. You get the health, the flat health, the bonus health. You get the magic damage per second to nearby enemies. And the Chilling Smite is also quite good on Ramus. After that, the next item you almost always want is Thornmail. Like, you pick Ramus in the game if you want to counter an enemy team comp that's getting a lot, doing a lot of physical damage. So Thornmail is great next. It gives you more health, gives you more armor, and critically that Thorns Aura. So whenever you're hit by a basic attack, reflects magic damage equal to 10% of your bonus armor. Well, obviously that scales well with Ramus, right? 10% of your armor. He's someone who ends up with lots and lots of armor. So along with the defensive ball curl, reinforces the whole notion that you're trying to kill people as they reflect damage back on the armor. Uh, unfortunately here, we were trying to go in, but Skyfish was doing a really good job of preventing us from engaging with the Zyra plants. Really, really annoying. Anytime he shoots out the Zyra E, which is grasping roots, yeah, roots enemies, and that along with the Jinx traps did make it hard for us to get into a lot of these fights. So again, for me as Ramus, I'm just, I'm trying to get on top of Jinx. That is like the big goal in these fights. I need to somehow get on top of Landon and taunt him. If I can do that, we can probably win the fights. If I can't do that, we're probably going to lose the fights. And look at that. Oh, poor Black just gets blown up there. Rooted initially, then the Faplic hits the charm, and as soon as we lose Soraka, we really can't fight for this turret. So again, we claimed that Baron, it felt like we had climbed all the way back up into this game, but nope, now we're falling, now we've lost the last couple fights, we're falling behind again, and the immunity team's gonna take that. So they're back up to a 3,000 gold lead, and in fact, it's really more than that, because they've got the triple Infernals. So in truth, the, the um, deficit is more than that. But watch this, I'm gonna look to Powerball in, so I'm gonna slow it down to half speed again. We're gonna have another big team fight. So I want to get Landon, I'm gonna flash in, I'm gonna get the knockup. Landon is gonna use his quick silver sash. And now right here, all their skills are being used on Ramus. Meanwhile, Electric goes in, gets the stun, he is going to be doing so, so much damage. Meanwhile, Myth is piling on the damage at the end. That's two kills for Myth. That's going to be a third kill for Myth on the Landon right here. So now we'll go back to regular speed. And then that's going to be a fourth kill for, well, for Myth. Can he finish it up? Can he get the Quadra kill? Or no, the Penta kill here. Electric's trying to chase this down. Knock up. And there we go. The Bane Penta kill in that team fight. So it was happening really fast. Didn't feel like I managed to capture all of that in the commentary, but essentially I powerballed in, I got the knockup, and then we forced the Quicksilver Sash use. The Quicksilver Sash use on Landon. He uh, actually did not Quicksilver Sash the taunt. I actually didn't get the taunt off at all, but he used it right away because I'm sure he was thinking the taunt was about to come in. And as a result, there was nothing to stop Electric from getting the big time stun. He flashed it on Riven. He got his uh, Keeper stun on like, I think, three members of the enemy team, including Landon. 
their team used most of their skills on me in that fight. Again, it went really fast, so it's hard to see, but I've gone back and watched this a couple times. Faflik used his charm on me, again, largely because I'm blocking. I was just, like, standing in the way and blocking it from being used on someone else. And Ball and Brian used the Warwick ult on me as well. So I was able to soak up most of the damage, and then, along with Electric getting the key stun on their team, that allowed Myth to sit in the back and just clean house with a pentakill. And that has totally flip this game in terms of how strong Myth is because with getting a pentakill, Myth now has gotten a ridiculous amount of gold. He is now almost, not quite, but is almost caught up to landed in gold. He's still 2,000 gold behind, but he claimed about 3,000 gold off that team fight and just narrowed the deficit by a huge amount. Here, we're going to look to go in and we managed to catch Skyfish. He's going to get taunted, so there's nothing that he can do. He's going to get blown up. That is Ramus at his strongest going in. One person damage. Now, XBL's following that up. He's going to hit the Aurelian Soul Stun, and so we're going to continue chasing. I'm going to Powerball in. Landing gets caught again, and just like that, we've killed their bot lane. Baron's back up again, and we have a 5 on 3 advantage. So that's going to uh, hopefully clear us to go ahead and take Baron. If there's one thing we've managed to get in this game, we have managed to get a Mountain Drake. So we, we're actually equal with them on Mountain Drakes. We're just way behind when it comes to Infernal Drake. So as long as we can land this Smite and take this Baron, we're actually back in the gold lead now. And hopefully we can just snowball this game to a conclusion because we've really, like I said, managed to flip the script. Vayne is really strong. So that's what we need to do here. Now Electric's going to go out over the wall. He's going to look to get this. And we're going to look to claim this. But oh, it gets stolen by Ball and Brian. Blame the jungler. Who is the jungle Ramus in this game? So we do manage to kill all three of them. But oh, we lose the, the Baron. And if we had just managed to take the Baron there, that probably would have been a quick conclusion of this game. But nope. Now it goes right back into doubt again. And although we're going to have a pushing opportunity here because we did manage to kill three of the five members of their team, we don't have Baron buffing our minions, whereas their team's going to have Baron on their own minions. So Skyfish and Landon are going to have to defend this. I'm going to lift the Powerball in, but it's a great route. I'm going to clear off of Skyfish, go into Landon, and he's going to get taunted. And as you can see, as soon as he's forced to attack me, he just dies in an instant. Electric trying to go in, but probably chase that a little bit too far. So we actually somehow go one for one there. Uh, which is a bit of a shame because I think if we'd had Electric up, we could have looked to continue pushing this. But nope, even though we managed to kill both of them and score an ace, their team is reviving Snowball and Brian Faplik reviving. And although they do not have Baron on any of their team members, there's really no way that we can break the double Nexus turrets here. It would be a three on three because we didn't have Soraka with us. Black died back there in the Baron pit. So it's going to go back to being a, a pretty even game again. Like We are slightly ahead in gold, but they've got all those Infernal Dragons. So it's pretty close right now, and this is a long enough game, I'm actually going to speed it up to double speed until we get another uh, engage here. So right now, our team was thinking we really need to focus on how we start these fights, and in fact we were really planning the start of our fights around when Flash was up on Ramus and on Riven. We, we kind of needed the Flash to be up on these champions, because otherwise it was really, really hard to get in and go after Landon, who has now upgraded his Quicksilver Sash to a Mercurial Scimitar, and he also has a stopwatch right now too. So a little bit of poking around right here. Nothing uh, nothing much going on. So let's go back to normal speed again. We're looking to push here. Uh, we're getting some damage on this bot turret. And uh, we are going to claim that. So our gold lead is actually growing. We're up to about a 3,000 gold lead. So we're going to look to pick a fight. I just want to get on Landon, but I'm going to force the engage a little much. I flash in. Landon's going to Quicksilver Sash out of my taunt. I'm still chasing him, zoning him out of the fight. And we are going to kill Warwick right there. But there's a problem. We've lost all our minions. And this tower is going to do crazy amounts of damage to us because we do not have any minions to tank the tower for us. Meanwhile, Snow is now chasing this down. We're going to lose Black Soraka in this fight. And XPL's gotten caught behind the tower. A Jinx rocket finishes off Landon, and, or excuse me, finishes off Electric. And so we actually end up losing everyone in this team fight. And at the end of all the carnage, it ends up being a 4 for 3 in red team's advantage. I was able to get out of that. And uh, hopefully that gives you the idea of how difficult it could be in some of these fights. Again, I used my flash, flashed in, tried to get the taunt on Landon, but he's got that Mercurial Scimitar so he can remove the taunt if he, if he wants to. And that is what he did there. So even though I was able to zone him out of the fight, again, the critical thing, we did not have any minions, so we tanked like 25 tower shots or something ridiculous like that. And uh, we ultimately are not able to get the tower. I think a good fight there could have just ended the game as well. But nope, not able to get that fight. Red team does a great job of defending. They are able to protect Landon in that fight. Unlike the last team fight, able to protect him. And like, look at this. Yeah, the plants, the jinx traps, it can be really hard to get on top of 
Uh, really hard to get on top of Landon. Skyfish was doing a good job of protecting him. Like, the scoreline might not look great, the 3-5-15, but um, Skyfish was doing a good job of protecting his AD and making it really hard to go in and get these taunts. So, ultimately, uh, that team fight is won by the red team. They keep us off of their inhib. The gold lead is now evened up, 62,000 on both sides. And we're kind of back to the stalemate that we were in before. Actually, more of a stalemate. We were ahead by like 3,000 gold. Now we don't have that lead. So, if anything, their team's probably ahead right now because their team is the one that has the uh, all those drakes on their side. They actually have double mountain and triple infernal. And that means that the elder dragon's going to be a huge problem for us. So this looked like it might be a fight, but then we back off and it doesn't turn into one. So I'll speed it up to double speed again until we get our next fight. There's kind of two philosophies that you can have when you have... Uh, these very AD-centric comps on both sides. You either go for peel, which is you try to protect your AD, or you go for dive, which is you try to kill the enemy team's AD. My team was going for dive. That was our goal. We have Riven, we have Ramus. Our goal is to dive on top of Landon's Jinx and kill him. Their team was going for peel. They're uh, trying to protect their Jinx and protect their Jinx from, from dying. And they had some good tools to do that. So this was really interesting in seeing like the, the peel versus the dive. Uh, comparison between the two. So now right here, you're going to see an example of these kind of competing strategies in action. So we knew that their team was there, and we're looking to pick a fight, looking to try to kick someone out. I see Landon over here. I was like, oh, their team's a little bit split. Maybe I can go in and taunt someone. Um, like, we see that Faflex Ari is right here. I was like, oh, if I can get a taunt on Ari, we can probably win this team fight. But it turns out that is a mistake. I'm going to get charmed. I'm then going to get jumped on by the enemy team, and I get blown up at the start of the fight. I was like, oh, no. No! I picked a terrible engage and put my team in horrible shape. So now their team's going to look good, but XPL gets off a great ultimate from his Aurelian Soul. So even though we lose Soraka right here, we are in fact still able to get off lots of damage. Myth is able to claim a kill there. Landon, though, is stronger. And here comes the Jinx Rocket! Oh, that's sad. So they end up winning that fight. They go four for three. And in all honesty, we were lucky to go four for three because I got blown up at the start of that and I did absolutely nothing. So the difference between getting a good engage versus a bad engage, very much on display there. If, uh, if I just run into the middle of the enemy team and get charmed like I did there and die like an idiot, our team is going to lose these fights and we're going to lose the game. So not, not good there. A good example of how if your jungler picks a, picks a good start to the fight, it can go uh, really well versus if your jungler picks a terrible start to the fight, it can go really poorly. So. I, had, I would like to think I had been picking some good fights in a lot of these situations, but that was a horrible one there, and frankly, we were very lucky we didn't just straight lose the game off of that, because if the minions had been in position for them to push, then we uh, we might have just lost the game. But instead, we lose in Hib, so now we've got super minions to deal with. Their team is at reclaim the gold lead, and in fact, they're further ahead than the gold would indicate, because again, they have five dragons. And we have uh, one. <laughs> We're actually quite... Oh, so there is another... And there's an Elder Dragon spawning in, what, one minute. So that gives us two things we need to play around. Obviously, we need to try and claim the Baron, if at all possible. But we also need to be super worried about this Elder Dragon. Uh, right there, we're thinking about starting a fight, but ultimately does not turn into one. So this is when this is when the game gets super duper nervous. Everybody's worried. Everyone's like, oh man, if I make a mistake and get caught out, I'm going to lose the team the game. And uh, it was just really tense while we're playing the game. If you want to check in on Landon, he says 455 AD right now. Really crazy. So I am trying to counter him by stacking armor. I have 350 base armor. I have uh, been building... What did I have? I went for the thorn mail, and now I've gone for the dead man's plate, which gives more health and armor. This is a nice uh, item on Ramus because of the, it gives you the momentum effect. And uh, now I'm going for even more armor. I picked up a, a Glacial Shroud. I'm trying to build this into a uh, Frozen Heart because it will shut down auto attacks. Honestly, probably a little overstacked on armor here. Probably should have gotten at least one magic resist item because the damage coming up from Fafleck and from CC Skyfish is not insignificant. They both do deal magic damage. So we're going to look to break the stalemate here by sending off Electric into mid. Remember, there's no tower here, so he can just look to push this. And we are just trying to avoid getting engaged on. We're trying to hold pressure around Baron while allowing Electric to split push and do his thing and just claim these open inhibs. And we're hoping that by maneuvering in this way, we can catch someone on the team out, maybe like pull them apart to different parts of the map and just try to catch someone in an engage. So we're, we're looking to do that to Skyfish. Unfortunately, Black is going to get jumped on there. 
and he's very low, and oh, Brian's going to catch him out. So we've now lost our Soraka, but we are taking these in him, so if you look right there. Still, there is going to be a fight right here. Myth has been silenced. He's going to get Jinx Rockets, but he just barely survived, so I'm going to probably in. Get the taunt on Garen, which is not the worst target, but not the best. Right here, Fallen's Brian's going to miss his jump in. He just barely misses his ult on Myth, and now I'm doing my best to slow and taunt him, so we are going to claim that kill. And now Landon is still alive. I'm going to flash after him. He's going to flash away. Can I manage to catch up to him and taunt him? And, well, I don't actually manage to taunt him, but Myth is right there, able to able to clean that up. So it is a three for two in favor of our team. But more importantly, we end up claiming both of these inhib. So we've got inhib in mid and inhib in bot, and that's going to give us lots of map pressure. And we would really like to try to push over these towers and end the game, but we don't have minions. There's an Elder Dragon up. There is a Baron up. So we decided, all right, we have to take this Elder Dragon because their team has five Dragon stacks. So rather than try to end the game off of the towers where we really don't have minions, we're going to look to go back and we're going to try to grab that Elder Dragon. So we were able to kind of break the stalemate by having Electric go mid and take the two in Hibs. That put us in a dangerous position, but we were able, fortunately, to win the team fight. Even though we lost Soraka at the very beginning of that fight, we are able to win it. The key thing to that fight was Myth was able to sidestep the ultimate from Ball and Brian. He, like, the Warwick ult just barely missed, and it would have killed Myth. And, oh wow, somebody just used stopwatch in the, in the fountain right there, I think. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna look to come back here, trying to pressure around Baron. And at this point, the key situation is we have two inhibs down, right? So there's super minions in mid, super minions in bot. So we should not start the Baron here. What we want to do is we want to pressure the Baron. We want their team to come out here around the Baron and just wait for someone to have to go back because they will have to go back or the super minions will push over their nexus. Like with double super minion lanes, they're going to have to send people back or else their, their, um, their Nexus will just die. They will lose the Nexus turret. So we are not trying to do Baron. We are trying to pressure around Baron. I, I mean, Electric's hitting it, but we don't actually want to start this. Unfortunately, Sorak is in trouble. Let's see. Can he manage to get out? We were fortunately able to get out. Now, I am going to get taunted here. I am going to get killed by Landon. So meanwhile, Myth picks off CC Skyfish. So we've got a kind of a, a split fight here. We are going to be able to kill Fatlick right there. And Guardian Angel's triggering on both sides. Fortunately, Myth has that Guardian Angel. So even though we did didn't want to force a fight here we end up in a fight and now let's see who's still up it is a three for two in our favor so um, we were not able to pull off our strategy successfully we were trying to avoid a fight and just let the minions kill the base we weren't ultimately able to do that in part because I kind of got engaged on and it wasn't a great fight but uh, we're taking advantage of the pressure right now to try and get damage on these inhibs this top lane inhibitor is pretty open because, again, their team has to go back to defend these super minions in the other lanes. And we're going to see Myth push that over, but it turns out that Garen does a lot of damage. And yeah, Myth was a little bit surprised by that one. He was like, oh, wow, Snow had his ultimate up. And that did a lot of damage because uh, apparently Vayne was, what is it, the nemesis, the villain? What's the term for it? Was the villain. Vayne was apparently the villain. So yeah, dealt true damage with that ultimate there. And... Net result of all of this is we get a ton of map damage, but our Elder Dragon, which admittedly was relatively weak, our Elder Dragon times out and doesn't really do that much for us. So, here we are again. Game is still very close. The, the gold difference is essentially nothing. The big difference is just these Elder Dragons, but their team has all three in hips down. So once again, we're in a situation where we don't really need to fight. We just need to let the super minions pressure us, but unfortunately, Black is in a really bad position. He does not have flash up. He's going to get killed by Landon. So now they're in a situation where they have the 5v4 advantage. And remember, they have Triple Infernal and Double Mountain Drake. So this Baron is going to die absurdly fast. And in fact, they're able to get that, that Baron kill before we can do anything. So once again, Baron has been traded back between the teams. They're not going to be able to do a lot with this Baron because look, Super Minions, Super Minions, Super Minions coming in on all three lanes. So, again, there's not a ton that they can do with their Baron in terms of pushing, but it does mean that the Super Minions are not just going to push over their base and end the game. So, once again, we're back to kind of a stalemate here again, and it's a little bit unfortunate that we uh, we had somebody pick there, that we lost our Soraka player, because otherwise we could have just, you know, pressured around Baron, not, not start the Baron, not fight, just pressure it, wait until their team has to go back, because, you know, they've got Super Minions in three lanes, and then go take the Baron for free once they have to back. But unfortunately, we're not able to pull that off because we lose one of our team members. And so we're back to kind of this stalemate. So they are using up their Baron, clearing these minions, but that's preventing us from ending the game 
with these uh, with these minions. I'm gonna try to parvel in, but once again, Skyfish hits the root. I lose like half my health because I've got 400 armor, but I only have 64 magic resist. Yeah, like I said, probably a little overstacked on uh, armor here. Probably should have gotten some more magic resist. Uh, but the good news is I have Soraka, and late game Soraka is ridiculous in terms of how much she can heal. So I'm right back to full health again, and uh, just like that, I don't have to back, and I can just relax here. Now there is an Elder Dragon spawning in a minute, so we have to be aware of that. Uh, their Baron is going to time out relatively soon if we just clear minions on both sides. Not going to be a big team fight here because I played in this game. I know what happens. <laughs> So yeah, um, the next big thing is going to be the Elder Dragon. You can see we're pinging it. We're getting ready to prepare for this. Electric's going back to buy. He's on full build. Picked up a. He already had his Guardian Angel. I think his Guardian Angel is going to be back up for this fight. It's going to be close. And so that's what we're looking for. All right. So let's go back to normal speed here. So their team's coming in. They looks like they still have this Baron, but I see an opportunity for a flank. So I'm going to come in here, slow down the half speed. I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to get the taunt off on Landon, which is again the key thing in all these fights. He is going to use his Mercurial Scimitar, but now Electric comes in, gets a secondary stun. He finishes off Landon, and that is just super key because we had such a so much damage coming out of the Jinx. Meanwhile, now we're trying to get snow in September. I am about to die, but I'm going to use that stopwatch. We're still zoning away Faflik right here. Ball and Brian has lost his whole front line. CC Skyfish, there's no one left to protect him. He can't do anything, and we're going to finish him off. And that looks like it's finally going to be it here, because Faflik has already used his ult. He can't escape. Uses Zanya's, but nothing he can do. So triple kill for Myth, and we've gone 5 for 0, and that's finally going to be it for this one. So at the very end of this game, after it's been such a back-and-forth match, we're able to get the key flank. Oh, by the way, defensive ball curl, 913 armor. <laughs> 900 armor while defensive ball curl's up. So yeah, not going to die to anyone dealing physical damage once that happens. But yeah, we get off the flank, and we win the final team fight of the game, and that's enough for us to push over the Nexus and put this one to an end in a 47-minute game. I tried to speed it up a little bit, but yeah, long, long game. Really, really fun game. Uh, obviously more fun for my team because we, we pulled off the comeback, but very tense, very stressful, all about whether we could get a good engage. If we got a good engage on the red team, then uh, we won the team fights. If we got a lousy engage, if I got charmed or knocked up and couldn't get off a taunt, then we just died and Landon killed everyone. So it was so fun playing around these engages and it was so crucial to be locked on target and try to get that jinx. The whole game was about whether we could get jinx and whether their team was able to get Vayne. And it was really fun. It was a little bit like being in a professional game. I mean, not really. We're not professional players, but felt a little bit like that in terms of how the team fights played out. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you uh, like this game and want to come out to more of our Tuesday night games, there's information right below this video in the description if you want more information about our Tuesday night matches. Hope to see some of you there. Until next time, take care. Have a great week. See you guys soon.